Good morning, my grandchildren and my friends. Today we're looking at uh, Jeremiah, the great book of Jeremiah. His name means the Lord throws and throw down on carnalism he is about to do. Dear Lord, keep us out of the ditches, Father, if you will. Help us all understand the things that you would have us understand, Father, and help us in the best way that you will. We love you and we need you, Father. Father, we believe. Amen. That little prayer said, let's get on with some reading and see what it says here. Moreover, the word of the Lord came over me again. Interesting note here. Uh, moreover, uh, Bullinger says, uh, it is the first chapter in the row which was rewritten after being burned. And... Uh, so this chapter was kind of really pretty much supposed to be part of the first chapter. I'm assuming that's what he means there. Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem. <clears throat> this is the word of the prophet, the word of the preachers. This is what we should say to the Jerusalem. This is uh, people seeking God. People that are looking for the scriptures for understanding. Jerusalem. This is what Jerusalem is. A gathering of spiritual beings. Saying... Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, uh, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not sown. Uh, Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his uh, increase, all that devour him, uh, shall offend even shall even shall come upon them saith the Lord uh, this is a uh, he's talking about uh, there was a time when he led these people from the wilderness in chaos of slavery and they come to uh, God and uh, now there's fixed to be a turnaround here Does Israel always seems to do in these old uh, stories there seems to be a cycle. Um, people get themselves in a bind. Uh, they cry out to the Lord. The Lord bails them out. The people get spoiled because of the good times the Lord gives them. And then they get themselves in a bind again and so on and so on and so on. This is kind of our human nature. This is the trap of carnality. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob. In all the families of the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that ye are gone far from me? Uh, you don't have to look very hard on the TV news today if you dare watch that thing, because it will make you sick inside. But you can see how far we've come away from the Lord with so many abominable and atrocious things taking place in our world today. This is what part of this cycle where we turn our back on God and we start to reap the benefits of that poor wisdom. What iniquity of your fathers have you found in me? God is saying, what did I do to make you turn so far away from me? This word of God has always been there to lead you, to guide you, to bring you, to bless you, to make you happy. <clears throat> why don't you read this book anymore? Why, why, are you, why are you searching after everything other than the Word of God for your happiness? And they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain. Uh, vain is, a, is a pretty much the same thing as carnal. Uh, we uh, all understand things in the carnal. We see things in the carnal. We're not really looking to the spiritual. And if you're new to this channel, this is kind of what I do. I'm, I'm looking for the spiritual connotation and meanings of the scripture and how it pertains to us personally in our lives. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt that led us through the wilderness, uh, through the land of the deserts and the pits? We're no longer looking for that Lord that had that great power and that great kindness uh, we're looking for something else nowadays. Though a land, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death. 
uh, through a land that no man passed through and where no man has dwelt. Uh, he led us through all that in the past. And we became a, a holy people through it all. And But uh, what happens when uh, God blesses you? You become spoiled. Uh, it makes me think of the birth of this great nation, the United States. Uh, we were all Bible thumpers back at the time. We came here as Christians, a Christian colony. The Christian uh, creed was in our politics. It was in our lives. And... Uh, we read and looked toward the Bible for our guidance, and we became the greatest nation on earth for a couple of hundred years. And now we're decayed and falling apart. Why? Because we don't have this Word of God as our staple. Uh, only the very few left is reading the Word of God. Everybody else is looking to small G gods. And I brought you into a plentiful country. There's where we get spoiled. When we start getting when we start getting the goods, then we take our eye off of the God that saves us to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. And when ye entered, ye defiled my land. This is where we become spoiled here. God give us a break, and what we do with the break? We we took our eyes off of our troubles because we didn't have any. And then when you take your eyes off your troubles, you lose. Um, you lose a gratification and respect for God because you now you're partaking of everything of a life of ease. Defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. Again, if you turn on the news for five minutes, you will see this abomination in your face. The priest uh, said not, where is the Lord? Uh, and they that handled the law knew me not. Uh, the TV preachers today and uh, most preachers on pulpits and plastic churches, what I call today four-wall building churches, uh, they don't read this Word of God. They don't uh, instruct you in this. They might read four or five lines out of the Bible and then spend the rest of the sermon talking about an old funny uncle they had on some fishing trip that he equates to everything he learned in those three lines uh, through that story. It's just a bunch of blowhard uh, nonsense. But people don't really get around to reading the word of the Lord anymore. And this is why we are defunct. And they shall handle the law and you me not. Uh, this is uh, our leaders. This is our judges, our court system. Uh, when you take God out of that system, shame on us. And the pastors also transgressed against me. Uh, there's more talking about the, the people that's uh, explaining the word of God. The pastors, the people that look after the sheep. That come looking for God. We, we got nobody on our side at this point against me. And the prophets prophesize by Baal. You know, Baal is a, a carnal likeness for God. You know, this book, this Bible, uh, can be of Baal if all we see in it is carnally. Uh, it's like uh, Baal was a guy who would, uh, people would worship their little babies uh, to, so they could have good crops and make money and so forth and have be blessed. What they would do is they would take their little children and they had this big, huge iron bull and uh, it cast iron bull in the shape of a bull. And they would build a fire in the belly of this thing. It was basically a stove and they would lay their children on that uh, on that stove and slowly cook them to death. And what a horrible and heinous thing carnality makes us be. When we read this about the story about Baal and the carnal, uh, we see that bull, that cast iron bull, and we say to ourselves, my God, how can these people be so cruel to the children that they love? Uh, how can they possibly do that? And yet we do the same thing every day, the spiritual likeness for this. We serve our children up to a small G God. Uh, we tell them that Christmas is about a Santa Claus instead of Jesus Christ. We tell them that Easter is about an Easter bunny bringing you eggs instead of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We do these things in a much more horrible sense, even than what was done back in the old days by Baal, cooking their children to death. We cook our children to death spiritually. It's a horrible thing. And uh, so this is what I mean by we, we have no longer have the ability to see uh, spiritually, but only carnally. Because we'll read that story about Baal in the Bible and we say, oh, man, uh, what a horrible thing. I'm glad we don't do that. And here we are doing the same thing spiritually. 
This is what the Bible wants us to understand, the spiritual meaning of what it means to serve your children up to death. Uh, it was talking about serving your children up to spiritual death. And then, you know, that kid, uh, if God touches him and wakes him up out of uh, the, the traditions of men, takes him a lifetime to come out of that. But uh, come out of it, we do. Praise God. Uh, and uh, walked after things that uh, do not profit. And nothing profits in leading our children like Baal did uh, to death, be it spiritually, be it physical, be it whatever. There's no way to profit by hurting your future, and that's what your children are. They're your future. We should invest everything into them and not a bunch of foolishness. We should invest everything good and godly, this Word of God, into them. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, why? He knows that... Uh, that it's worth going after it. God loves you, and He's not going to give up on you. I remember a time I told that to a little kid. I'd never give up on him. And uh, this is how we should be with our young, with our children, with our future. He's not going to give up on us. And after your children's children, will I plead? This word is always here for your children, for you, for the children's children. This word is a mountain that ain't going nowhere. And uh, every word we read is a step up that mountain. To get to God. Amen. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Shittim, and see, uh, and send uh, unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if they uh, there was such a thing. Nobody fights for you like God. Have a nation changed their gods? which are yet no gods. He's saying, these people serve small g gods. And just go ask them if they hand in their one small g god for another. They don't. Uh, they are true to it. And what God is saying is that uh, you know me in the spirit, and yet you leave me for the goods of the world. You may read this Bible, and God may give you some spiritual things. And the next thing you know, you're off at the Super Bowl, drinking beer, cussing and farting and having a... Uh, a good old high and mighty carnal time and everybody laughing and and um, and, and you you just kind of leave a uh, little old god there behind uh, until the next morning when, when it's time to get over your headache from drinking too much booze and too much party and then we get back to reading our scriptures and uh, you, you see my point uh, we have a quick tendency uh, to trade in god for the world for carnality not a good thing but my people have changed their glory uh, for that which doeth not profit. Uh, now, I'm picking on the Super Bowl. I ain't particularly against sports. I don't like sports, but I know a lot of people do. But sports can very much be a small G God just like anything else. If you wake up in the morning and you're reading the sports page to see who won over what team, and before you grabbed your Bible, uh, what did you just give your first fruits to? What did you just pay your first homage to of the day? That first thing of the day should be the scriptures. It should be a reaching out to get uh, the knowledge of what God wants us to know and be. It shouldn't be a sports page. It shouldn't be a CNN news. It shouldn't be a Fox News channel. It shouldn't be a TV. The first thing we should grab for is a prayer. We should thank the Lord for this and every day. And then we should uh, ponder and think what it is Lord wants us to be and shape ourselves in today. Uh, this sets the track. This gives us a good programming. And programming is an important thing. This Word of God is a programming. Amen? Be astonished, O oh, yea, heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. Uh, this uh, carnalism, this way of, uh, of trading in God for every shiny thing that comes down the pike is it's dangerous. Um, you know, it's, uh, be afraid of it. It's, it's going to cost us. For uh, my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, uh, the fountain of living waters. This is Jesus Christ says he is this book. Uh, Lo, I come to you in the, uh, in the uh, volume of the book. Uh, this uh, Jesus is the word. We trading in this word. This is our waters, this word that we're reading right now. And we have hewned out themselves a cister, cistern broken, uh, a cisterns. We've hewned out for ourselves cisterns, broken cisterns, 
that can hold no water. This is our carnal concept of God. This is uh, how we like to keep God on the back burner while we go on living our lives, enjoying the carnality of that life. Uh, them cisterns hold no water. It's going to leave us flat. Uh, we need the Word of God. Nothing else will do. And when we start focusing on anything other than the Word of God, we're going to find just how broken those cisterns can be. Uh, is Israel a servant? Is he a uh, home-born slave? Uh, why is he spoiled? Well, it's like I was saying, every time that God helps us and bails us out of hard times, uh, we get on good times and good times spoil us. It's a cycle. The young lions roared upon him and yelled, uh, and they made his land waste. Uh, his cities are burned without inhabitant. And all this is a yeah, this is carnal. It's what it leads to. Uh, also, the children of a uh, north uh, and uh, uh, Tarshapanes have broken the crown of thy head. Uh, these are carnal. Uh, uh, I look at this as how our churches are today, our plastic churches, how our uh, our theologies are today. Where does it come from? It usually comes from people with doctrines from colleges uh, teaching us how to be happy instead of letting the Word of God do it. It'll break the crown off your head or take away your glory uh, that God has given us. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way. Uh, we do. We often forsake the Lord of God. We'll trade him in for, like I said, a sporting event. We'll behave like something other than how we should. Or a Christmas party, we may show up and get drunk. Or we may hang out with old friends and act like we did when we were in junior high school. Uh, all these things leads us away from uh, what the Spirit of the Lord, this Word God gives us, and how it converts us. We're always trying to keep that one foot in the grave with carnality. Shame on us for doing it, but we do. And now, thank God for the cross, so people, so don't give up hope. Now, this book is doing a good job in pointing out our failings, but don't you worry. They're paid for on that cross in full. And now, they hast thou to do in the way of Egypt, to drink the waters of Shara, and what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria, and drink the waters of the river. Now this is everything other than the waters of Jesus Christ, uh, the waters of captivity, and that's uh, sin, that's carnality, uh, that's whatever your hobbies are that you put before God, whatever you do in your life that you don't make God first and foremost. All these things uh, we all have a tendency to do at times to drink the waters of the river. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. How does this happen? Let's take, uh, let's take something simple like smoking cigarettes. I used to smoke them in my youth. A lot of people I smoked them with in my youth are still smoking them today and they are still uh, filled with sickness and illness from smoking them things. And uh, now they're addicted to them and they can't get off of them. Well, guess what? Uh, this, them cigarettes are going to correct themselves. God don't have to make a bolt of lightning come down to zap you to get that nasty thing out of the temple's mouth. He don't have to do that. That cigarette is going to fill you with a cancer and with nastiness, and your breath will smell like a, an ashtray, and women won't want to get your wife won't want to kiss you, and uh, it'll rot out your teeth, and it's got its own, uh, its own uh, correction. Now, let me find out where I was here. And such is, uh, such is all carnality. Um, the Lord is going to let us uh, be corrected uh, for thine own uh, wickedness shall correct thee. It's, he's, got, he's going to let us uh, uh, live in misery and the misery of sin until finally that little blight's going to go off, that bell. And for cigarette smokers, it's all too often that, uh, that long face from the doctor that tells them there's nothing we can do. But boy, how we'll look to the Bible then. Boy, what will... How we'll start thinking about uh, the things God's been trying to tell us all our lives. Uh, we can, you know, I used to tell my mom that hindsight was twenty twenty, uh, and I was sorry I told her after uh, her sickness and dying. But uh, she used to also take him. Well, we all take part in things that is uh, is unhealthy for us. But uh, and I remember saying that all the time. Uh, maybe being holier than thou, but I used to always fight for mom's soul. 
and uh, mom was a, a beautiful person, but uh, you had to know her to love her, uh, and she's a, uh, and I'm sure she's with the Lord now, and I'm sure the Lord is a, uh, uh, all the things that I wanted her to know then, I'm sure the Lord wanted her to know even more, and uh, I, we got to trust the plan of God, amen. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. This goes all across the board, and none, uh, not the least of all, is not reading this Bible. If we don't read this Bible, it's going to correct us, even if we never crack a page and put an eye to it. By not reading it, it's going to teach us. We're going to learn from our wickedness. And thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know, therefore, and see that it is an evil thing and bitter, for thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, uh, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord of God of hosts. Uh, we need the fear of the Lord in us. We need that respect in us. We need to look for the words of God to see what it is He wants us to know and learn. I'm deliberating to try to finish this this thing. It's a long chapter, or uh, you know, most people don't hang with these uh, these videos very long. And but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to push on through it. It's just gonna have to be a long video. What you might can do is you get tired of listening, turn it off, and then turn it back on later, maybe tonight before you go to bed or something, where you could finish it. But uh, I feel compelled to just uh, read this thing on out. Uh, for of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress. When upon every high hill, under every green tree, this is all idol worship, this is our uh, TV habits, this is our holidays, this is our hobbies that we do, uh, in spending time doing anything and everything other than looking to God. This is what these green trees and high hills represents. Thou wondrous, playing the harlot. We play a harlot. We bow down and back up to these things and let them have our way with us like an old mule in heat, which we're fixing to get to in the scripture. Uh, this is kind of like how God sees us spiritually when we look to everything to fill up our brains and our hearts and our minds except his word. Um, yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. Thou that art, uh, thou turned unto a, a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me. And I write in red there, this is the carnal. This is strange to God. This is how the flesh wants us to see. This is how Satan wants us to see in the carnal. Uh, God wants us to see in the spiritual. Amen. For thou, for though thou wash thee with a nitrate, and I looked up that uh, Berlinger's note, Nike is like alkali. This is a, a strong soap, uh, common, a pound of soap. Uh, though I wash thee, uh, uh, for though thou wash thee with nitre and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me. Uh, in other words, we're, we're scrubbing carnally. We take baths in the carnal, but we ain't, we ain't scrubbing our soul. We ain't washing our spirit. We're not being washed in that blood of Jesus Christ completely, fully, and wholly until we have that revelation of Jesus Christ and we see things in the Spirit. Amen. Thus the Lord God, how canest thou say, I am not polluted? And this is the biggest problem with the plastic churches of the world today. They all think they're all that in a bag of chips. They all think they're the 144 chosen ones. Everybody thinks they got it made. And uh, they're just as dirty as, uh, as anything can be in the carnal. I have not gone, I say they, I should say we, this is all of us. Never should I exclude myself. Amen. I have not gone after uh, Balaam. They're saying I ain't going after Balaam. I don't serve my kids up to death. All I do is teach them that uh, there's a Santa Claus instead of a Jesus' birthday. All I do is teach them at Easter is about a bunny and bring them candy to rot out their teeth and make them sick physically. That's all I do. I don't, uh, uh, but I'm not, I'm not practicing Balaam. Uh, God's telling you that you do practice Balaam. You do uh, serve your children up to death spiritually uh, just because you're not sticking a knife in them and killing them in the flesh and physical. Uh, you can kill somebody in the spiritual. It happens every day. See thy way in the valley. Know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift uh, dromedary uh, tra uh, traversing her ways. 
<clears throat> a wild ass used, um, used to the wilderness that sniffeth up the wind at her pleasure. This is an old mule in heat. Uh, uh, mule, this mule's looking for sex. This mule is a, and just like you got a dog or a cat that goes in heat. You know how different their uh, their personalities can change. The dog that uh, you people said that dog won't bite. He's as harmless as he can be. But if that dog smells some heat in the neighborhood, uh, you watch how fast that dog will bite that kid's hand. It'll happen. Uh, heat. Uh, when something is after something and lust, it completely changes the uh, state of mind, the state of heart. And this is how uh, Israel is to God. Uh, when we see a, a pleasurable thing that happens in the flesh, I hate to keep picking on Christmas and holidays, but it's the perfect example for what we do today. We're doing the same thing. Uh, if we if we get through the Christmas season, and I love Christmas season because what it initially represented, uh, but if you get through the Christmas season and you ain't telling them kids about the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, not even a little, uh, man, you're you're that mule in the heat, uh, given after that uh, that lust to the worldly pleasures, and not for the original intent of what Christmas was for, was for that we could all recognize the birth of Jesus Christ, and. Uh, while I'm on that subject, it really wasn't around December 25th. That had something to do with other other things that I won't get into now. But I think uh, uh, people kind of figured out it was really around September. And they figured out the birth of Jesus had to do with uh, what the festival <clears throat> that Mary went to to visit her cousin. What festival was taking place in that town when she visited. And they kind of count down the months. But uh, none of that is uh, really important. Uh, when December 25th rolls around, if we're teaching our children about the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, get what? That date don't really mean a whole lot, does it? It's the story. That's the name of God. God is story. His story is his name. And if your kid knows the name of God, uh, praise God. Amen. In her occasion, <clears throat> it's still talking about that mule, <clears throat> who can turn her away. Uh, when you've got an old mule, try grabbing on that rope. That halter and keeping her to get into what she wants. Uh, that thing will drag you around like your little toy. All they that seek her will not weary themselves. Well, good morning, my grandson. How are you? <laughs> you just waking up, bro? Yes. Okay, let me get back to finishing this, bro. And then we're going to get on some pancakes here. Matter of fact, go on there and give a, Nana a hug on that swing. Mm -hmm. And tell her Pop-Pop's asking for pancakes on the menu this morning. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, my brother. Well, good morning there, granddaughter. Go give Nana a hug on that porch, my daughter, my granddaughter. Give me a the hug. second one. I love you. Go. I need to get my Barbie. Okay, baby. Uh, let's see where I'm at. It's a beautiful thing to wake up with grandchildren. Uh, wild ass use wilderness and suffering and sniffing the wind. I say, behold thy foot from being unshod. And the throat from thirst, uh, but thou saidst, uh, there is no hope. No, for I have loved strangers. Uh, in this state of uh, carnality, uh, it's easy for us to give up. And uh, after them, I will go. I was just talking about things like Christmas and Super Bowls and sports. And uh, this, we kind of just look at this as there's no hope. And I'm telling you right now. This is what the carnal mind says, but the spiritual, the heart says, not only is there hope, but you're looking at it right here. It's the word of God. It will deliver. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so was the house of Israel ashamed. Uh, there, uh, they there. Well, hello. Oh, you, I thought it was the other little granddaughter. It's you again. You ain't got your dollies? Oh, you got your Barbies. Okay. And there is kings and their princesses and their priests and their prophets. Uh, we're all going to be ashamed in this. The guys preaching the, uh, the, the, in the plastic churches, the guys on TV preachers, uh, we're all going to be ashamed of this carnal attitude we've all taken toward God. And uh, like he said up here, it was, it's going to be self-adjusting. Say it to a stock. Thou art my father, this is a piece of wood, or to a stone, 
thou hast brought me forth. This is how we see in the carnal. If we look at it like a little cross and we bend on our knees and turn toward that little wooden cross when we pray, uh, we should stop doing that. God is not a piece of wood. He's not a, he's not a cross. We should see that cross in our heart. He wants his word written in our heart, not in our eyes. For for uh, they has brought me forth. It's, uh, this little stones of cross and statues we make. This, and of course, these all represent our concepts of God, our carnal concepts. They have turned their back on me and uh, uh, not their face. Let me read that over from 27. They say it to the stock, thou art my father, and to the stone thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me and not their face. But they're saying the, they're, they're the one helping me. But no, it's the Spirit. God, the Spirit, that's been helping you all along to get you to the point where you're going. And that's the revelation of Jesus Christ. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save me. Now we're talking to the Spirit. You let the doctor give you a long face, and that, or you're in that hospital room, and you're facing that uh, dreaded uh, cancer or whatever illness that's going to take us out. And uh, then we start uh, getting into that spirit. Then we start looking deep beyond this, the pieces of wood and the stone. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? God's asking us. Where's your football games and your Christmas uh, celebrations without Jesus and your Easter celebrations without uh, the resurrection? Uh, where are these gods now? <clears throat> Let them arise if you can say if they can save you. <clears throat> in uh, the time of thy trouble, and according to the number of the cities, are thy gods, O Judah. Um, and God, small g gods are right here. It means time spent on junk. And this is everything other than what we should have first and foremost, which is a reading of this word of God. Amen. Wherefore will ye <clears throat> plead with me? Yea, all have transgressed uh, me against me, saith the Lord. Uh, we've all guilty of it. We all do it. There's no sense in fighting that aligned to ourselves. Look to the cross. Jesus Christ paid for that sin in full. Uh, it was, go and sin no more comes to mind. Do your best not to sin. When Christmas rolls around, tell your kids about Jesus Christ. When Easter rolls around, tell them about the resurrection. Uh, do this a little more each, each and every year. There's nothing that's going to happen in a in a big instant, but uh, uh, we're all guilty of this. Amen. Uh, the uh, vain have I smited your children. In vain I have smited your children. They have received no correction. <clears throat> Hard head makes a soft butt, Mama used to say. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. <clears throat> Uh, carnal is always fighting the spirit. It, it's, a, it's a mortal enemy of the spirit. O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? He's asking, have I been a wilderness? Have I been dark? No. This word of God has been here your whole life. He didn't hide it. Uh, you've had it. In your hands. I know uh, every one of us has old Bibles laying around houses somewhere. It's been there. We need to look to them. Wherefore, say my people, uh, we are lords, and we have come no more unto thee. Uh, they're saying uh, we're, 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 we're in control of our life. We got it figured out. Uh, that's what your carnal mind's telling you, but not so. Can a maid forget her ornament? Uh, <clears throat> if you're a spouse to the Lord Jesus Christ, can you forget the ornaments you're going to wear? Or a bride her attire, can you forget the... Um, you retire that you're going to wear your, that uh, gown you wear when you get married to the Lord. This is the Word of God. This is what you read. This is what you know about the Word of God that, and His wishes and wills for you. Uh, you can't do these things. You can't join the Lord and go there naked <clears throat> to that wedding without your ornaments, which is what the Spirit of the Lord gives you when you read this Bible. We have to read this Bible. <clears throat> can a maid uh, forget her ornaments or a bride forget her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me uh, days without number. Why trimmest thou that they may uh, to seek love? Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Question mark. Therefore hast thou also thought 
taught the wicked ones thy ways. This is what I was telling you about the little kids and what we teach them in holiday times. Also, in the skirt, in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor. You think about an old, uh, uh, an old prostitute always raising up her skirt, the blood of the innocent. Uh, this is a pictorial thing of that, of how we are in the carnal. Uh, you know, it's likened to that great horror that sits on that beast that rises up out of the waters. Uh, not my words, but how the Bible chooses to uh, depict these things. It's graphic, this blood on his skirt, but uh, thus there it is. I have not found it by secret. We don't hide these things. When we uh, get drunk and act a fool at our parties and we become unchristian-like, we don't hide it. You, you, you don't have to find this in secret. It's out in the open for everybody to see. But upon all these, yet thou sayest, I am innocent. We say this all the time. We go to church on Sunday. We read the Bible. We act all holy now. We all uh, act all like we got it. And then next thing you know, we're at a Christmas party getting drunk, doing something we should. Uh, with somebody we shouldn't. <clears throat> These Don't worry. If we have that cross. Look to that cross, people. Uh, and surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee because thou sayest, I have not sinned. We're still looking to God. We're still, even in the carnal, God is still with us. God is going to, as long as we read these words of this Bible, we're going to get to that revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Why gettest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt. Egypt is our captivity. We're still captive today in the carnal. And thou wast ashamed of Assyria. <clears throat> Yea, thou shalt go forth from him and thine hands upon thine head. For the Lord hath rejected thy confidences and thou shalt not prosper in them. As long as we stay in that carnal state of a being of mind <clears throat> we're not going to prosper spiritually you can make tons of money you can uh, have a big house you can gain a lot of things uh, carnally but all those things will turn to dust and fade away grandchildren if you're watching this look i got one trying to come through the door that's locked homie you got to go around there's nothing better grandchildren if you're watching this i hope you remember when you were this age and I hope you guys are, are uh, reading the Word of God in your older age. I hope you're seeking the Word of God. Um, I love the fact uh, that y'all are over here. I love the Bible studies we do at, at night. And I hope you have good memories of that. And it encourages you to stay in the Word of God and become a child of God as God's His true heart desires. Uh, with all that being said, this has been one long study and one long video. I love you. This is why I read this to you, and I read this to you. Say hello to yourselves when you get to be old guys. Hi, Hi. Hi YouTube. And I what do you... my Bible study every single day I wake and, up. <laughs> and I play with my Barbies every day when I wake up. <laughs> All right, awesome. Oh, I hope, I hope that now that you're looking back at these and that's your old people, that you remember to read the Word of God and you look for the... If your lives are sad when you get older because you're not reading, I hope that you're going to get on reading this Word of God and you're going to find your happiness. Uh, God loves you and so do I. Stay in that Word. Have a great day.